Welcome back to Book Break. In today's episode, we're investigating what makes a classic. So today I'm going behind the scenes with Macmillan Collectors Library, which publish gorgeous editions of classics from Little Women to The Sonnets by William Shakespeare. These books are very popular on Instagram because they just do look so gorgeous. So can you talk me through the process of how you choose the covers and everything? Mm. We work with our art director and a picture researcher who has the rather lovely job of finding images yeah. for us. And she will go to picture libraries, art dealers, maybe younger new artists, and uh, we will look at a number of possibilities yeah. for each book. So this is a Christmas book coming up. This one I thought was a bit too fussy. This is quite a modern image. This is These are traditional Christmas stories. And again, I thought this was a bit stark. So we all agreed in the end to pick this one, which is cute and gifty. Yeah. There's never any harm in having a cat on the yeah. front of the cover. <laughs> and then what can be a little bit harder sometimes is these sort of um, 18th, 19th century novels. So this is a fantastic book, The Awakening, which is an American novella about a woman who challenges the social norms. How do you capture that in an image? So here we've gone for the sort of traditional oil painting look. They're not vastly dissimilar. We've just picked the image that we think reflects the story and, the, and that will stand out mm -hmm. best on the cover. So you can see even here there are different moods. This mm. is probably a bit too cutesy for the turn of the screw. It's a frightening story. This one is just a girl. I don't think I mean, she looks like something bad's happened to her, but yeah. it doesn't necessarily tell a story. Whereas we went for this image because it has the two children. It suggests a relationship between them. And the wistfulness of this child's gaze into the middle distance suggests something's happened. So mm -hmm. I think that's quite a good example of an image that captures yeah. what's in the book. How do you choose which books you're going to publish? I think it has to have bite. It has to have endured and stood the test of time. What they will all have in common is that they will deal with themes uh, that are still relevant today, universal themes. Sort of the parts of our human nature that exactly, have always existed. Exactly, exactly. And is there anything that you do have to change about the book? For Collector's Library, one of our selling points is, I would say with the exception of about two or three books, they are complete and unabridged. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to be as close to the original editions as possible. So we'll either publish or we won't publish if okay. something is too long or too dated. I have, however, just thought of one exception. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be publishing Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle is a wonderful story of a man who talks to animals. It's quite relevant today because it's very much about preserving nature, preserving the environment. It reads very nicely and then it suddenly becomes to what is now by today's standards a very racist story storyline so in fact this is the one book that we have changed mm -hmm. so we've asked the lovely Philip R. Dar he's literally just re rewritten one chapter. So what kind of books have you decided not to publish? Quite a few there's a series of detective stories um, where the central character is Raffles people of my generation will remember it was a very big television series very very popular so we thought oh those would be fun to do if you read them now to me they fell very flat there's a very sort of classist structure of the you know, public school fellow with his rather inferior sidekick. And then other things we've turned down because, as I mentioned, there was issues with racism in Dr. Doolittle, which we've overcome. Some you, you just can't. can't do. An interesting one was She by Ryder Haggard, which is a great story. Women ruling, you yeah. know, women in charge. But it's set in Africa and it's really... I don't think you can publish it now. Right, yeah. yeah, so you have to make those decisions. Yeah. And what do you think people can get out of reading classics that's different from new books? I think you get back to the source, in mm -hmm. a way. You'll probably be able to find a book in any classics list that has inspired what you might be reading your contemporary reading yeah. now. It's kind of getting back to those original tellings or just something that's really magnificent, you know, Wuthering Heights. There's nothing else like Wuthering Heights, yeah. you know. It's quite a unique book, it, quite shocking in its day and actually still, in a way, quite shocking now. I think what's also been interesting is to revisit books and it, sometimes it's fantastic to come back to these books and appreciate them in different ways. Yeah. Sometimes you revisit a book and you think, hmm. <laughs> it's not what you remember. It's 
it's not what you remembered. Yeah. I mentioned Wuthering Heights earlier, which I recently reread, and I had issues with it now. Well, so those books come into your life at exactly the right exactly. time. Exactly. Even if you don't like it so much later in life, exactly. it was still perfect at that it time. It was perfect at that time. And I think a lot of books like Wuthering Heights are kind of gateway books. Mm. They're books that introduce you to the magic of books. Yeah. And that's one of them yeah. that really grabs you. And what books now that have been mm. published now do mm. you think might become classics? Mm. That's a very good question. I think it's very hard to say. It's got to be a test of time. Yeah. I think Bridget Jones is a classic in terms of capturing both the era and the sort of anxiety of early yeah. adulthood. Yeah. Maybe that will be a classic. So universal emotions are exactly. not going to go away. Exactly, and then what do you think might be a classic? Oh, I don't know. I think yeah. that's a lot. It's a really hard question. It's a, it is a hard question. Sometimes yeah. you read those books where they just seem, you relate to them so, so exactly. much. And I think exactly. those kind of books yeah. might, might stick around. Yeah. 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 Great, well thank you oh, so okay. much for talking to us. really interesting. <laughs> and do give this video a thumbs up <laughs> if you love these books as much as I do. And do subscribe to Book Break for new videos every Thursday. See you next time.